Hey, my super beautiful, lovely souls. It's Lizzie the Lightworker here. So, we are in Taurus season, guys, and I'm super excited. I love Taurus so much. Your energy is beautiful, and I've been so lucky to have a lot of Taurus in my life. And um, I just have to say, I love Taurus. Taurus is a wonderful sign. Very giving, loving, protective. Um, there's nobody like them. There's nobody quite like them. So happy birthday, Taurus, I would like to say. And we're in Taurus season from April 20th to May 20th. Today, guys, I want to work on sort of a pick a card, and then I'm going to draw some more cards in. But we're going to work with house cards because sometimes, whether we realize it or not, there's different areas in our life that need attention, okay? And the planets are always moving, and things are always happening in the cosmos. <clears throat> Regardless of where the planetary positions are, we still may have an area in one of our houses that needs work or help or advice, okay? So I want you guys to think about one, two, or three, and I'll go through each card, okay? So look, if you pick the first one, seventh house has to do with your long-term goals, okay? Like what you're putting your energy into um, at work or in your personal life, all right? Um, more so with the people that are in your life, all right? So the people at your job, let's just say. To me, this would say that you have been at this job a while or long enough to know whether you want to stay or go. So um, most people would say, well, I don't have a choice. I have to stay. I have bills to pay. <clears throat> and that's partially true. Seventh house has to do with your long-term goals and your long-term feelings. Do you want to stay at this job forever? Are you happy there? Do you see things changing? Do you see yourself growing there? That's what the seventh house really has to do with. Business matters. Money that you're able to save or that you're not able to save. More, um, more so too, like with your home life, okay? Is this going to give you security? Do you have a pension coming? Um, will you get retirement money? This is all the things that you think about when the seventh house comes in or is around, okay? So if you've picked this card, it's drawing attention to that area of your life, thinking about your long-term goals, thinking about your future. How are you going to be when you're old? Are you going to have enough when you're old? Um, are your children going to be secure if you have children? Um, it's also about your partnerships. So your marriage, your um, long-term partnerships. Have you been in a relationship for a long time with somebody and you're looking for it to progress forward? That's the seventh house. Um, are you not sure of your commitments and where you should be putting your commitments? That's your seventh house. Um, it's more about foundation, marriage, security, support that you get from the people around you. So it also has to do with your family members and your friends. So how you feel supported by the people around you. Do you feel supported by the people around you? If you don't, then there could be an area somewhere that you need to either remove these people or refocus your energy or reevaluate situations. To me, the seventh house is about reevaluating situations. Okay. So it's time to think about long-term. It's time to think about your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, <clears throat> you know, your, your life partner, whoever you're with in a relationship. And if you're single, it's time to start thinking about settling down, planning a future, making a future for yourself, getting your, um, financial house in order, um, minding your P's and Q's, you know, so to speak. I know that sounds so corny, but it's true. Thinking about children, thinking about all the things that you plan a life out for yourself. Are you going to stay where you live for the rest of your life? Or are you thinking about moving? It's all those major life things in the seventh house. Okay. So I want to pull a butterfly card for advice. Sentimental feelings, okay? So yeah, this goes like perfectly. Sentimental feelings is like all the things that, you know, you remember. Maybe the way you remember your parents. Maybe the way you see other people and you know you look fondly at them. Like, oh, they look happy, okay? Or you're thinking about the past. Maybe when you were happier. Maybe there's a job that you left that you regret it and you wish that you could do that again. Or maybe there's something 
you always wanted to do, but you were afraid to do it. And you're sort of in this energy where you're thinking back and you're reminiscing and you're, you know, maybe there's somebody from the past that you're missing. Maybe a relationship that ended that maybe you wish it didn't end or you're feeling like that energy from the one that got away sort of. Um, it's all the things that you think about um, that either progress you forward or hold you back. Okay, sentimental feelings are very strong feelings. So it might be time to get those in check with the seventh house here, okay? If you pick card two, the eighth house. Okay, so now this is where Uranus energy comes in. Okay, Uranus energy is very rebellious. We actually have Uranus around us right now in Taurus, okay? And it's not gonna leave Taurus till 2026. So it's rebellious and resistant to change. The eighth house is about transformation, how you transform things. It's from like, let me put it to you guys this way. High school, college, graduate, job, transformation. Um, girl, woman, pregnant, mother transformation if that makes any sense it's also transformation in your relationships like um dating engaged married if that makes any sense okay so if you have picked this card and this is where you feel or might be feeling that you have the most emphasis on in this eighth house this is about how you plan to for the future what you think about what you want um you know, sort of how you're going to balance those intense emotions for the people you love, okay? This also has to do with relationships that might need to end, okay? Um, relationships that maybe you are resisting and ending with. Maybe you know that it's over and you're just staying out of fear to move on or the intense emotions that you have are just too hard to overcome. Same thing with a job. You may be staying in this position because you're fearful um, that you may not do well in the next position or you may not get a job as well paying as this okay it's not about that it's about really focusing like okay not being fearful I want you to understand don't be fearful because um, that's intense emotions that has to do with this intense emotions it's about letting things evolve when they need to evolve it's about recognizing an ending when it's an ending like when it's in your face it's saying I'm an ending you have to accept it um, in a new beginning at that, okay? Because every new beginning comes from some other beginning's end. Isn't that the truth, guys? Okay? So if that's the area that is affected now in your life, and it's telling you that you have to adopt more transformational energy into your life and not be fearful of change and of um, things happening and sort of letting go of control and expectations, okay? We cannot control a storm that is coming, right? So we have to sort of let the storm happen and let the storm pass and then pick up the pieces after the fact. Sometimes the storm comes through and it cleanses everything. And we have new hope and new vitality and new renewal of things, okay? So it's just telling you don't fear change, okay? And we're going to get a butterfly card out now, too, because I just love these. Look, welcome the new. How perfect is that? Okay, so welcoming the new, all right? I say this all the time with the butterfly. The butterfly is a caterpillar. It becomes uh, ready to go into a chrysalis. It forms a cocoon. It transforms within the cocoon, comes out a butterfly. It starts a whole new life cycle from what it started out as, right? We're always growing. We're always evolving. We can't resist change. Change is necessary. It's part of natural life, natural cause, all of that, um, natural element. It's part of that. Change is necessary. Change is normal. It's healthy. Okay, Taurus, I know you have a hard time with change, um, but it's just more harmonious, you know, if you accept it and you allow these things to happen to yourself because such so many beautiful things can happen. You know, you could be stuck in this energy and a caterpillar is not the most beautiful thing to look at, but when you go into your transformation and, you know, you're in this chrysalis and you're changing and you're evolving and you're thinking and you're doing and you're exploring, you come out a butterfly and you're absolutely beautiful, ready to fly into the world to a new um, environment or a new cycle, right? Okay, so let's get this third card. All right, in your 12th house, okay? 12th house is all about surrendering control, all right? 
So like I said with the storm analogy, you cannot control a storm. It's going to be, whether you want it to come or not. You can not really fear it because you don't even know what it's going to be like. It could, they could, like, you know, on the news when they're like, oh my God, this storm is coming. It's going to be horrible. We need to do this. We need to do that. And everybody panics and they run to the store and they do this and that. And they board up their windows, like, you know, like a hurricane or something. And the storm comes through and it was near, not nearly as bad as they predicted it would be. Right. So in those moments, in those panic moments, and we have them all the time over lots of different things. When we can't control something, we panic, we live in fear. Um, it does not change the outcome, okay? So that's sort of what the 12th house is about and the focus in your life is about letting go of control, surrendering to a higher power, surrender it to whatever your higher belief is. Um, God, the universe, Buddha, Jesus, whatever your higher power is, surrender the outcome because we cannot control it. When we live in control, we are living under an illusion um, and that really blocks us up from change and um, greater things happening to us and it messes with the law of attraction where you think out positive you're going to receive positive back that's what the 12th house is that's what the 12th house, house um, focuses on so you have to surrender sometimes your fear and anxiety you have to let it go um, and not be worried about the outcome surrender the outcome that's what the 12th house is about okay so let's get out a butterfly card and keep the faith how perfect all right keep the faith no matter what okay um even when we're at our darkest okay and we're shedding tears let's just say over something that's really hard or we're in grief over something that's rather difficult there is always that glimmer of hope right hope is what keeps us holding on hope is what um is part of our I don't know, our belief that better is coming, okay? We all have that. Even when we despair, we want to believe that hope is going to hold us up. Keeping the faith is going to hold us up. We want to believe there's always a way out, okay? And there is, there is, there absolutely is, okay? So whatever you're stressing about, whatever is bothering you, whatever's upsetting you um, in your relationships, in your job, in your day-to-day -day life, your family members, let go of trying to control everything. Let go of what you think the outcome is going to be. Living in fear and anxiety is actually no way to live at all. It's unnatural, all right? And I know, yes, fear is natural. It's embedded in our brain to be fearful of something. Um, anxiety, all these things, like, yeah, that's a touchy subject. But I'm saying, like, once you surrender the outcome of something it makes it so much easier to deal with because then you're saying I'm just gonna let well enough be I'm gonna let whatever's gonna happen happen I know that I have people around me that love me I could always find somebody to talk to I could always find somebody that cares I, I'm stronger than this I've been through worse things okay and take those things out and really look at them think of a time when something was so bad you thought you'd never get through it and you got through it you lived to tell right that's what you need to focus on okay that's what it is all right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this reading. Please let me know what you think if you'd like to see more readings like this. And stay tuned, guys, because I got lots and lots of Taurus videos in store, and I'll be working on Twin Flame soon. So if you'd like to see any Twin Flame pairings, let me know. And as always, guys, follow that rainbow moon. I love you all. See you on the next one.